A company's price to book ratio tells you its market value relative to its book value. For example, you could take a company's stock price, divide it by the book value per share, and that will tell you the price to book ratio. Alternatively, you could take the market cap and divide it by the total book value. The book to market ratio, on the other hand, tells you the book value relative to the market value. Okay, so now everything would be flipped. So with the book to market ratio, instead of having stock price in the numerator and book value per share in the denominator, it's the other way around. You have the book value per share in the numerator and the stock price in the denominator. Okay, so you see that the price to book ratio is actually the inverse of the book to market ratio. So if you're a value investor and you're looking to invest in companies that are a bargain, you could either use the price to book ratio, in which case you'd want companies that have a low price to book ratio, or alternatively, you could use the book to market ratio, in which case you wouldn't want to look for companies that have a high book to market ratio. So it would seem like these are interchangeable. It's like just personal preference. You could use price to book. You could use book to market. But some investors have a preference for book to market. And if you're wondering why, based off what I just said, it ultimately comes down to if you were sorting a list of companies and you were trying to find, okay, which ones are going to be the best value and just want to easily be able to screen them, uh, it's a little more difficult when you use the price to book ratio. And that's because if you're looking for the lowest price to book ratio, which I just told you is what you want, uh, you actually, if you sort companies by the lowest uh, to highest price to book ratio, the ones you're going to get at the top of your list are actually going to be ones that have a negative price to book ratio. And that's because they have a negative book value. And those are actually companies that you probably don't want to be investing in if you're a value investor. So let me explain that with an example. Okay, so I made up uh, some numbers here. I've got company A, company B, company C, all the way through company G. So I just made up some numbers, stock price, book value per share, and then you can see I've calculated the price to book and the book to market ratio. So I'm gonna sort these. I'm gonna sort these companies first on price to book and show you why it leads to a problem. And then later I'll, show, I'll sort them by book to market and I'll show you why that problem is solved. Okay, so if you sort them on price to book, so right here, we're gonna sort them lowest to highest. Okay, you see that company F and company D are actually at the top. They have the lowest price to book ratio. And it, the reason they're at the top is actually because they have a negative book value per share. So these are companies with a negative book value. So if you're thinking as a value investor, you don't want companies with a negative book value. Okay, so you actually want to ignore these companies here. They would not they would not be of interest to you. So you basically, the, the fact that some companies have a negative book value it makes it problematic when you're, so, so you could just say, well, let's just ignore companies that have a negative book value. And you could do that. Uh, that that would be one way of handling this problem. You could just say, look, any, but any company that has a negative book value, throw them out of the sample. Okay, but an easier way of doing it uh, would be to just say, well, let's just sort. So here's our original list of companies again. We'll just sort, instead of sorting on price to book, forget about price to book, we're going to sort based on book to market. Okay, and then we're going to want the ones that have the highest book to market. So now here's, again, the same list of companies, but now I have sorted them uh, based on book to market. And I put the highest ones at the top and the lowest ones at the bottom because with book to market, you actually, if you're a value investor, you want companies with the highest book to market ratio. And so now we see, okay, here are the two companies here, the highest book to market ratio. And remember, if you have a book to market ratio higher than one, those are seen as, okay, those companies are a bargain for a value investor. And we see here, we got company G, we got company C. Uh, these are at the top of the list. These are the ones that a value investor would be most interested in.